Hi, and welcome to our second week of Introduction to Public Relations. Uh, we're going to continue on a little bit with our discussion on the career of public relations and kind of define it a little bit more detail. Uh, as we said in the first class, that um, public relations attempts to establish a positive relationship between an organization and its various audiences, usually through image building techniques. Let me explain that the idea behind all of this is to get people to like us, to like our company so they buy our product or give money to our organization or go see our movie. Um, we create and carry out policies or procedures and programs to influence public opinion or public reaction about an idea, person, product, or organization. So the idea is we're trying to influence people to know more about us and to like us again. So how do we do that? So basically, PR people are trying to convince an audience, uh, whether it's inside your own building, a town, a region, state, the nation, world, outside your usual sphere of um, uh, influence. We're basically trying to promote our idea, purchase your product, support your position, or recognize your accomplishments. So we're trying to get the word out. We're trying to make people, number one, aware of what we offer and who we are, and also to encourage them to do something, to act on something, to buy something, or again, donate money to uh, join our organization, to be a member of our church, to um, in, you know, choose a particular law, okay? So basically we're trying to get the word out and let people be aware and influence them to do something, to act on something. A large part of what public relations professionals do are tell stories. They create narratives to advance their agenda. So we create stories or ideas or uh, beliefs or feelings around a product or a company to basically advance our agenda. We want people to know who we are. Public relations can be used to protect, enhance, or build reputations through the media, social media, or self-produced communications. So we try to build our reputation out there. And the media is a great way to do it because they reach the largest audience. And that's the goal of the public relations person and the company to reach out as to the most people that they can. And the media is a great way to do that, to get out to a lot of different people at one time. So a good PR practitioner will analyze the organization, find the positive messages and translate those messages into positive stories. When the news is bad, they can formulate the best response and mitigate the damage. So one of the things that we want to do is look for the stories within our own organization. So when you join a company or, or a business or an organization or you take on a client, you try to find out as much about that person or that company as you can and look for these stories. Where's the good stories? You're basically a journalist and you're trying to be a journalist. So you're reaching out to find the stories to tell. In the media world, you have two different kinds of communications that are going on out there. You have uncontrolled information, and that's information that once it leaves your hands, it's at the mercy of the media, your content, your style, placement, and timing. So once you write a story or you send it off to the media, um, you don't control what happens to that afterwards as much. It's up to the media then to take it, put it where they want to, um, where it's going to be placed, where it's going to be run. So if I write a press release and send it to the media, um, they could change the headline, they could change where it's going to be in the newspaper or what day it's going to air on the TV stations. Um, they can change some of the words on it. They, would, they might get a different quote for it. So we're basically at their mercy. The other um, direction is the controlled information. That's basically where you have total control over the editorial content, the style, the timing, and the placement of your, your communication. And that's basically advertising. So basically, I can purchase an ad in a newspaper or on TV or the radio or whatever, and I can control what goes in that ad. I control that space, uh, the content, the day it's going to run, how long it's going to be. Uh, how it's going to sound and look, and where it's going to be in either that broadcast or that publication. So 
So advertising is paid media. Public relations is earned media. This means you have to convince reporters or editors to write a positive story about you and your client, your candidate, your brand or issue. It appears in the editorial section of the newspaper, magazine, TV station, website, could be social media. So rather than paid media section where advertising messages appear. So your story is more credibility because it was independently verified by a trusted third party rather than purchased. Okay, so uh, here, let me show you what that would look like. Uh, and a chart would be advertising is paid, it builds exposure, uh, your audience is a little bit more skeptical, guaranteed placement of where it's going to be, you have complete control of the career control over the, the ad. Um, the ads tend to be mostly visual, so because you, you're seeing it on TV, you're seeing it in newspapers, some content, but usually there's a picture or something involved. Obviously, you're paying for that space, so it's more expensive. And the message basically just says, buy this product. Whereas public relations, if you get a story put in a newspaper or on TV, that story is earned. It's something we get the, the media to, to do. It uh, builds the trust. Um, media gets third-party validation, so it's not just us saying it, the media is saying it too. Uh, there's no guarantee. You must persuade the media. So, you know, even if I send something out, there's no guarantee it's going to run. Uh, we have to get the media to, to be uh, interested in the story and see it as value to them and value to their audience. That it's got to be newsworthy. Media controls the final version. So, like we said, they control the headline. They control the space, how long it's going to be. Uh, they can make it a tiny story. They can make it a giant story. Obviously, it's less expensive because we're not putting much you know, cost towards it. The media is running it on their own. But basically, the concept is when, they, when the public sees this story, they see it as important, that it's not just an ad. It's not just something we're trying to get people to do, but that the media sees it as important enough that they wrote a story about it. And that's what's really important here is we want a yeah, it's kind of free publicity. It's, it's we get the information out, but um, we don't care that the media takes ownership of the story because that shows that instead of a, us looking like a used car salesperson, it looks like somebody else is giving us the okay that, hey, this is real. This is something you should watch for. You should be pay attention to. You should purchase or go to the event. So here are some examples of recent stories in the media that fall under uncontrolled information. These most likely came from a PR person sending reporters information through a press release or making a pitch for a story. A last minute campaign has been launched to save a historic 1954 diesel electric locomotive in Northeast Pennsylvania that's facing the scrapper's torch. It was there in a Susquehanna Railroad 600, which originally built for the Boston and Maine Railroad. It's scheduled to be cut up by January 22nd if no purchaser uh, steps forward. Officials with the Danbury Railway Museum in Connecticut are working to raise $65,000 to purchase the locomotive and transport it to their museum so it can be preserved back in New England, where it spent most of its working life according to their press release. Bob Aztecker will share his 41 years of experience practicing the sport of falconry during a free presentation at the Dietrich Theater in Tonkanic. He will show the tools of his trade and discuss the process of capturing, training, and hunting with and releasing a bird of prey, as well as stories about his voluntary work with the Delaware Valley Raptor. Local history buffs are able to test their knowledge and earn a degree to prove it, thanks to the Iram Temple Restoration Project's Iram Temple University event on Thursday, which drew nearly 100 people to the group's pop-up museum at 1 South Main Street in a simulated seminar. According to the Iron Temple Restoration Project Board President Christian Weilage, the pop-up museum served to introduce the public to what's in store for the temple. And finally, Hun's Cafe 99 was officially under new management as of Thursday, with previous owner Greg Hunsinger selling the business after 24 years to a longtime employee. The local bar and grill, located at 99 George Avenue, is now owned by Jimmy Finn, along with his wife, Leah. Finn has had a long working relationship with Hans Singer and worked as a bartender at Hans Cafe 99 for over two decades.
Another example is a story about a peanut butter pretzel guru, guru who created something new. So he sends information out to uh, the media saying, hey, I'm making new products and new recipe. Um, I think this will be good for your readers, your people who love these kind of stories. It's a local story. It's a progress story. It's something that we think would be interesting. That gets the reporter to bite on it. They run the story. And again, this might have been something he pitched to the media um, in some capacity, and the media felt this was a newsworthy enough story to run. Again, not paid, free advertisement in a way. The media runs it. It's a good story. It's a good human interest story. And it highlights our local businesses that right now are hurting a little bit. So controlled information would be me buying an ad in the newspaper. So this might cost me, you know, $500, $1,000, depending on the size of the media. It might cost even more or less. Um, this is an ad for Century 21, and they want you to basically buy a new house or sell your home. But they are paying for the, uh, what, what, you're, what you're looking at, you design the ad, you create the, the image you want, the words you want to put in there. You can pick the day it runs. Um, and the size you want it to look like. You can add color or black and white. Same with another one I saw for Quad A. I don't know if you've uh, used them to learn how to drive, but uh, this is one where they're encouraging people to say that they want to be the nominated for the best of category. Again, they control the information in here. You can see facts and figures put in this place, a call to action, an address, a website. They control all of that. They add the color and they designed the ad, and they designed the size, how big it's gonna be. You're paying for that space. Here's two more I saw, another realtor, and a thank you um, for National Activity Professionals Week. So just to clarify a, a few things, public relations is not journalism, and it's not advertising or marketing but it plays a role in each of them. So public relations, uh, you know, what is journalism basically? Public relations is trying to become a journalist. You're acting as a journalist. You're looking for the stories within your business or organization and getting them out there. You are dealing with the media. You are literally writing the stories or shooting video for the stories. Um, and you're trying to get it in for free. You're not buying that stuff. You're, you're, you're doing your job as a, as a PR professional. You're partially a journalist because you are investigating news stories that the media might cover. However, your agenda is a little bit um, biased because you're trying to put out positive stories about your organization. And you're basically committed to one thing, your business, your industry. It's not really advertising either or marketing because you're not purchasing the space. It's not about advertising. You lose control of the content, the, um, the timing, and all of the other information we said before. You are not paying for it. It's a free product. Um, so you have no control over it and there's no cost to it. But again, PR plays a role in all of that. It acts as an advertiser because you're trying to promote the business or industry. And you're also looking for stories like a journalist does. Public relations professionals rely on a lot of tools, in quotes, um, to get their message out there, to communicate with the, their audiences. Uh, one of the main tools that we use are press releases. These are written stories that we write about our business, our organization, our cause, and we send these out to the media. We write it as if it's a, uh, a journalist who would write it. And we'll go into this a lot more detail in the next couple of lectures. But the idea is to write a story as if a journalist would write it with the hope that the, the uh, editor or reporter will put as much information as possible out there and almost keep it as verbatim as, as we want them to. Secondly, we put together press kits or backgrounders. These are um, packages that are um, usually in a folder or it could be a digital um, at part of your website, which basically contains as much information as possible that we want our readers to know. And hopefully it will answer all of the uh, questions the reporter would have so they don't have to keep calling us for more information. 
Public service announcements, you see this all the time, don't do drugs, uh, don't drunk, drink and drive, don't text while driving. These are uh, free announcements that are, are put out there. Um, they tend to be more of a, on a, a social note um, to try to get people to do something or not do something. Uh, the ad right here is about buzz driving. Um, so basically, you'll hear these a lot of times on the radio, the TV, our college radio station, they run a lot of a lot of these P, uh, PSAs. Again, they're free usually. Um, it's something that the media puts out there as a public service, as it's called. Speeches and presentations. Um, a lot of times, uh, we, again, we need to get information out there to, especially our, our internal audiences, sometimes to external audiences or specific, very specific audiences. Um, and that's a lot of times done by a speech. You get the expert, the president, the CEO, um, somebody who's an expert in their field to give a presentation about the information you want people to know. And you do it in front of a pretty large crowd um, so that the message is out there all at once and they can answer questions afterward. Articles, newspaper, or editorials in the newspaper, on TV, on uh, websites. Um, it's another important thing. Get your opinion out there. Get your experts to write um, something about something. If you are worried about um, a issue coming up, if you're worried about a, um, if you want to promote about the need for truck drivers, anything like that, you can put an editor to uh, a letter to the editor, and write your story, write your opinion, write your editorial, and most of the papers and, and TV stations and stuff will put something out there. Collateral publications, we do a lot of this also, news uh, brochures, flyers, posters, um, any kind of a printed publication that we, what we need to get out there. We'll print, get the information out there, get it in people's hands, uh, salespeople pass them out. They're put out in, uh, um, in public places where people can pick up the information and read it at their own time. Annual reports are, again, re important for financial needs you need to let people know how you're spending their money how the money is being used and if you're being fiscally responsible and these are usually put together in a really nice package um, that presents the company in its best light social media very very important anymore the difference between social media and a lot of these other things is that social media is very interactive when you post something or get information out there you're going to get questions back, comments back um, with more information or to clarify something. Or people still have questions about what you put out there. So you have to be on top of this. This is a 24-hour thing. You always have to monitor social media and make sure that your messages are in the most positive light there, too. And, of course, there's advertising. Um, these are paid ads. These are content that we create buy and decide where and when it's going to run. Some of the activities that a public relations professional would use with their tools of the trade include program planning. So you're trying to come up with um, uh, events and trying to come up with the plans of how to make those events work. You're going to do a lot of writing and editing of stories and, and for feature stories and for newsletters or magazines. You're dealing with the media on a regular basis, so you're constantly talking to reporters or editors um, or podcasters or um, social media directors. You're also trying to establish your corporate identity to let people know who you are, what you're about, um, and what your company stands for. You're going to be doing speaking, so you might be talking in front of people, you might be talking in front of reporters, you might be talking in front of your own, own organization. You're producing things, so you might be creating press kits, um, videos, posters, um, magazines, newsletters, flyers. All of these things might be part of what you're, you're in charge of. Special events, you're coordinating open houses and um, press conferences and galas and all sorts of other entities. The idea is that you are in charge of communication. You're in charge of making sure the right people are there. You're in charge of the message, the look and feel of what you're trying to promote. And you're gonna do a lot of research and evaluation. We're gonna talk about this in one of our future classes too. Uh, a lot of PR people have to do research. 
They have to understand what it is uh, that their organization does. They need to look at their competition. They need to look out there in the world to see what's going on and to make sure that their message is correct, to make sure that what they're saying to the public is correct and hits the right audience and says the right thing. And you can evaluate whether one of your campaigns was successful or not. Uh, you want to make sure if you're going to put a PR campaign out there that something good came out of it, that it worked for your organization. So you need to be able to recognize uh, what worked, what didn't work, and have a plan on how to evaluate the success of your campaign. And a couple other important key PR skills uh, that you need to have. You need to be analyze uh, management's needs, so you need to find out what your corporation wants from you or needs from you. You need to be able to counsel management too. One thing that a lot of leadership teams and well, um, people at the top don't realize what goes down on the front lines. Um, they're dealing with their level of people. They're not seeing the real world stuff that's happening um, in the front lines of their, their workers. And so sometimes you have to help them with that or understand what communication issues might come up. And that's another thing with the identified causes of problems. You need to be able to be truthful with the management and figure out what's causing issues. You need to look at trends going on out there in the world and through your company and, and with what you do. You need to be able to plan, organize, and coordinate a lot of different tasks at one time. Uh, you need to monitor how your PR campaign is going and be able to follow up on it. You need to set goals and objectives. You need to motivate and influence other people. You need to work very effectively with journalists. That's very important. You need to understand um, what needs they have, what deadlines they have, and what, how their job works. You need to be able to communicate your information clearly uh, during meetings, during sessions with, with the media. You need to be able to write press releases, and we're going to learn how to do that in class. And this is basically um, writing information about what you want the media to understand and get it to the media. You're basically giving them the information that you want them to cover. Make sure you can identify major social issues out there in your company and outside your company and how it might affect you. And you have to work well with others, which is very important. It's not a solitary job. You have to be able to intermingle, talk to people, um, deal with all sorts of different personalities and with the goal basically to um, get the job done. So with that noted, what do you think are the personality qualities that you need to have to be a public relations person? To be an effective public relations professional, you need to be able to speak and write very well. You need to be able to analyze things very easily. You have to be able to identify problems and issues that might come up. Uh, you have to be very creative. Um, you have to be able to persuade people. You have to be able to meet deadlines, which is important, not just for uh, planning events and stuff like that, but also to be able to understand the deadlines media has to write their stories. You have to have good interpersonal communication skills. You have to be able to conduct research, again, identify and solve problems. You have to be able to cajole and nuance your way through any situation. Be prepared for anything that might come up and handle it well. You have to be able to use strategies and tactics not only to solve PR problems, but to seize PR opportunities. You also have to be a good organizer. You have to have information that is complete, in logical order, easily accessible, up to date, presentable. And your office should contain a number of different things to be able to do your job. You need style guides. Um, to be able to, if you probably learned about AP style and journalism and, and Chicago style, um, which are basically the standards for what the media use out there. You need to have references to journal materials that are appropriate to your mission, detailed files, media lists. You have to keep that up to date, updated on a regular basis. Um, you should have organizational information. So you need to understand the organizational chart of your company. 
You need personnel info, bios on your president, your vice president, different members of your company that um, the media might be in need of. You have to have organizational communications, all your memos and, and interpersonal information that comes back and forth um, through your desk. Uh, you need to have agenda information of different meetings. You have to understand the issues that are going out there in your company and in the uh, outside area. You need to have public information out there, photographs, swipe files, so any press clippings of, of anything that's been printed about you in the, in the press. You have to have financial information about your company, statistics, facts, and figures, if the media needs that on a regular basis. And it looks like we're gonna go on a road trip. So, after looking at giving you some information about what you might find in a public relations professional's office, let's go look at some professional public relations offices and get an idea of what they do. Here we are at the office of college relations. Let's take a look inside. What does a public relations professional need to do his or her job? What type of tools do they use to get it done? So we're looking inside at a public relations director's office to get a sense of what type of things they keep around to do their job correctly. So what items do you see in my background here of tools or desktop items that a professional in public relations would need to do to complete their job? Take a look. Ah, there we go right off the bat. We're getting a phone call. Telephones are extremely important because media and staff and people need to reach the communications person. So they'll contact us one way or the other. We'll call for reporters, we'll talk to editors, we'll pitch stories. Whatever we need to do to reach out to our audiences, to our publics, to the media, um, to get our information out there. What else do you see? Obviously the computer is important. We have to type up press releases, we have to write memos, we have to put together stories on a computer to get it out to the media. Um, maybe we might have to write a speech for the president. Maybe we have to put together minutes for a board. Maybe we have to uh, reach out and create um, emails, um, newsletters, other information for not only external publics, but are also in our internal public. In the inbox tray, we have a list of items going on or events going on here at the college during the month of February. So this gives us a rough idea of something that we know we have to prepare for and get information about. Um, a majority of the things that we see here are from the Student Activities Office of seminars or series and events that are going on throughout the month. Here's a stamper that if a piece of paper shows up here at the college or in our desk, we can actually make sure that we inform people what the date is that we received it. Here's a paper routing slip um, for when we want to send information out to the media. Uh, this has a list of all the newspapers, radio stations, TV channels that are out there. And so if we want to send out a particular topic or an event, these we, we can mark down which, which media we want it to go out to. And this keeps a track of a record, whether it's a feature pitch, whether it's a news advisory, a press release, a public service announcement, a legal notice even. Whatever it is that we need to get out there to the media, this is just a checklist so that we're uh, keeping track of what has gone out and when. This is a refrigerator that's in the office. Why is that important? Well, the reality is um, PR people work crazy hours. Sometimes we have a regular scheduled day. Sometimes there's an event or something that requires us to be here after 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. It could be a crisis situation where we're here for 24 hours sometimes or even longer. 
um, depending on the situation. But it's always good to have snacks, a refrigerator, something available because you're never sure if you may or may not miss dinner and need something to eat and keep refreshed. <laughs> now behind me we have uh, file cabinets. In addition to keeping most of our stuff on our computers, uh, we also try to keep a paper trail in case something goes wrong with the computers or if we just need to pull out a sheet or something of information that we need quickly. A lot of things come as memos still, um, so we keep not only um, this information on our computer, but we also print it out so we have files that we can draw from on a, on a given notice. So for reporter calls, um, we can pull out a file on almost any topic we need to and be able to reference it quickly. Before the days of digital photos, there were regular film cameras that took pictures. And so we keep a, a list of all the uh, original photographs that were her held here on the campus throughout the years. Let me just make sure I'm getting the right spot. But you can see old pictures, most of them black and white, some of them in color from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Anytime before we had digital cameras. So we had to print all of our photos at any given time. Buildings being constructed. Awesome hairdos from the 80s. And again, lots of group photographs that we've taken throughout the years. This came in uh, particular handy for us, especially when we started doing our 40th and 50th anniversaries. And you can then pull out all these old photos of faculty and students and staff from those days and have a record of them that we may not have digitally. And these are more lists of news releases and information we've sent out through the month. And this is particularly um, June of 2018. So you get an idea of the type of topics and different events that we held during that time. All right, so anything that gets printed in a newspaper or is on TV or anything like that is sent to us uh, in paper format so we can keep a record of everything from back in this, I think this goes back to the 80s or 90s, and we keep a record in case anybody wants to know at any point LCCC was mentioned in, in the media. And here's a look at what they look like up close. So basically this is a little bit about the broadcast type of stories that went on for July of 2020. Uh, here's some stories that were on WBRE, Fox 56 News, and WNEP. These were about a news conference held at, at the college with um, John Udicek. And we have more here. As you can see it's broken down different type of stories that are going on. Um, anytime we're mentioned in any way, this was a the flea market that ran. So you can see that story. The obituary, so anybody that's passed away that has Luzerne County Community College listed. Um, here and more. Here's something that we did with the Alumni Association. We went out to go meet with graduates who work at Geisinger of Wyoming Valley. And this is basically a frontline project that we did where we brought coffee out to frontline workers, especially alumni who went through the college during the COVID epidemic. Here is a Engagement announcement that was in the newspaper also. Um, an event for kids, the Lego re uh, Robotics Camp that we were offering. Again, if somebody who is a graduate of LCC gets a, uh, is mentioned in the newspaper for whatever reason, this is a mountaintop resident who is now the head of the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, but was also a graduate from Luzerne County Community College. Again, here's another one of those events where we brought coffee out to some of our frontline people. Um, again, graduates and alumni of LCC. 
sometimes the story is not directly about us. And this is one who's um, a reporter who's writing something about a lot of companies can't find drivers to drive trucks in their area. Now, we are a truck driving school, so the reporter reached out to us to find out some information about our truck driving program. And we were able to get quotes from our truck driving um, teachers and some of the alumni that were, or students that were going through our classes right now. And so that helps us with our truck driving story and we help the reporter by providing information that they needed. Listings of some of our nursing graduates. So we had a uh, class of, I think this was 2014, if I'm right. And the newspaper runs the full picture of all our nursing graduates and a list of all the students that went through the program. And over here, we can see some of our truck driving graduates also. Story about our Alumni Association having an annual craft festival. And if you remember last week, we talked about the Community Reading Day. Well, here's a new story that went with that with some of our staff that went out and did the stories. Here's another story how we presented Webby Awards for um, students in our web design classes who've helped um, someone in the community design a brand new website for free. Scholarship stories, so if somebody presents a new or establishes a scholarship for the school, uh, we make sure that that gets out there in the media also. And the media always runs a story about the first day of school. Um, and we're always included in there also. You can see Kings, Wilps, and of course, Luzerne County Community College. And again, one of the things we were going to talk about today, I, I believe I mentioned, was about editorials in the newspaper. Well, we created a new diesel technician program and we wrote an editorial about how there's more technicians needed in the area. So one of our faculty actually wrote this story that appeared in the Times Leader. Hi, welcome to the marketing office. Uh, this is where we basically create a lot of the different publications and social media things, um, uh, TV commercials, anything that we want to basically promote out to the public. Um, so our audience is also the internal publics and also the external publics too. So we are trying to use a lot of different media formats to reach out and communicate with people. So if you look around here, see what you see that might be helpful um, for me to do my job, to help promote things, to get information out there, to create um, items that might be helpful to, to get the word out. It's a little bit messy, but you can see we have different type of monitors here. We have a Mac computer, which I have two screens for, where we can make a lot of different um, software and publications and media posts, TV spots, radio spots, whatever we need. And I'll show you some close-ups of, of what the software is, but we also have an iPad. Um, the iPad is used to do a lot of our social media placement, obviously, if we're doing something on Instagram, Snapchat, uh, maybe TikTok down the line, we haven't gotten to that point yet. We can do all that right here on, on this. We can't do that on a computer or anything else. It's got to be on a mobile device of some sort. Okay, so let me show you a little bit around of what type of things I use to help do my job. We'll start with the PC. One of the main things with, with uh, what our jobs are is to monitor issues management, to look at what's going on out there, what people are saying about the college, uh, what's going on there in the world that we need to keep track of. So we'll look at the news, we'll look at um, various sites, a lot of different media that, that represent us. Here's uh, Times Later's website, here's Channel 16's website, and we look for our stories so we could do searches and stuff in here um, to try to find out what has been said about us. So if I type in, let's say, LCCC, This will give me an idea of what are some of the latest stories, or some of the stories that have been written about us currently or in the past even. And you can see some of these. One of them is about free classes that were offered to unemployed people from COVID. Um, this is an interesting one else. He gets a shout out in Late Night Movie. And I'll put this one up on our, our links underneath the, uh, the site today. And first day of classes. So, we also did a thing where we were collecting uh, used graduation gowns, 
to use uh, for masks. And here's a story about us opening up at the marketplace of Steamtown in Scranton. And a story about veterans, our, our pits inside opening. Um, and here's where in, one way in the past where it was a crisis situation where we closed down due to a threatening email that came through. And in our crisis management class, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what happened that day and how we handled it. We also use this site to monitor social media. So we post any kind of social media things. I use a program called Hootsuite to kind of see what, what people are, are mentioning about us, um, about some of the tweets that we put out. And we can also monitor Facebook and Instagram and a couple other things. Days of the year, this is a fun little thing to see what's going on today. And maybe I can make a social media po post out of um, one of those crazy weird days of the week. So let's clean out your computer day. Well, we have a computer systems uh, program that we can take that particular thing and, and make a mention of it. Um, say, hey, it's clean out your computer day. And on top of that, LCC offers a program for servicing computers. Opera day, molasses bar day, that might be a recipe I could find from our culinary department that would do that. And also there's something called social mention. Um, there's a couple of the programs like this, but I could type in Google, we do Google Alerts, we use this program to see if our name pops up anywhere on social media and websites, um, all over the place. So uh, Reddit even, and this kind of looks for these kind of stories that we need to find out more about. And sometimes we have, um, you know, so we catch some things that we weren't aware of, and that's a great way to make sure we're monitoring and make sure that our reputation is being kept positive. Here's my Mac. On the Mac we do a lot of different things so I can update the website on here but I also have the Adobe software which allows me to do Photoshop, InDesign, um, Premiere, After Effects, Adobe Edition, all sorts of software to create publications, um, create TV commercials or videos, create uh, radio spots, um, just about anything you can imagine, which is really fun and fantastic. So here's our website. One of the things I have to do is monitor the website, make sure all our information is up to date, uh, make sure we have our COVID information, which is up here. Um, to make sure we have different stories that we want people to be aware of, that there's live chats going on, that we're currently undergoing registration, that we have some marketing statements about the number of choices we have, saving money, transferring your credits, where we're located, um, things like this. We put, we make videos up to go up here, um, some reasons to come here, some statistics, testimonials, which is a very important thing to do. You want to tell your story. These are some alum, alumni who went to our architecture program and our um, culinary program, and they got these really great degrees. She's a principal at a um, um, at an advertising agency and Kate here owns her own bakery in the back mountain okay and again keeping up the calendar to make sure the public is aware of what's coming up what's what, what events we have going on at the school on a regular basis that includes the student internet so this or this is our staff internet I'm sorry you know even cafeteria specials forums that the people need news broadcast announcements that go out to all of our staff and again a college calendar and of course, you've probably seen the student version of this. Uh, we maintain some of that also. Uh, but we also maintain things like Facebook, um, Twitter, and we post everything from here. So um, just ran a story about middle states coming in, um, a store, uh, some information sessions that our student activities people are doing. We did a uh, Go Red for Women Day, where we all wore red shirts. That's me here in the background. So any kind of things we could post for question and answers from our alumni, from live chats going on, um, cancellations. So if you're closed due to a snowstorm, we post those out till we get those calls at four or five in the morning and have to kind of get that information out immediately in the morning. Um, I also looked at some of the ad campaigns that we have going on. And this is a digital campaign we're running right now. So I keep track of the statistics. Um, how the campaign's going, uh, how many people saw our ads, uh, how many people are looking at it on YouTube, 
There's 165,000 views or impressions put out there of a commercial we're running. Some of our Facebook posts and how they're doing, and this tells me if some ads are doing better than others. So those are the kind of things we watch also. Some more software and type of things that we do. This is a billboard campaign that we're running. So I designed a billboard to go out for, um, for that. Um, here's a newspaper ad that we ran. It was a full page ad about our culinary arts program. We put that in the newspaper. Um, we do campus maps. Let's see what else we got in here. Postcard campaign that we put out. Um, this was going out to high school students, so it's targeted to a specific audience. And again, it gives information about the type of programs we offer here at the school, uh, long-term and short-term, so that people are going to be aware of what's going on. We make sure we put a diverse group of students in there, so people see the kind of students that are going here and the kind of different programs that we offer. Again, more toys that we use to tell their story. Um, we have microphones that are designed to do radio spots or podcasts if we need to. We have video cameras, that's one of the older ones, but I'm, I use the newer one now to do this. And that's designed to do quick testimonials, to do um, videos on social media, to make TV commercials with, um, to do our uh, virtual, a lot of virtual things now with virtual graduation, and just get a video footage of things happening around campus on a regular basis. And we do things for in-service and all sorts of stuff that are, are designed, again, to communicate, to tell a story, and to show off what we can do. Here's an old Mac that we have, and one of the greatest technologies ever invented, a VCR. Anybody remembers what these are? The reason I keep this in my office is, um, one of the things that we wound up doing is we had our 50th anniversary not too long ago, and Oddly enough, not too long right before the 50th anniversary, one of our AV guys from way in the past retired. And they were about to throw out a number of different boxes out of the office. Um, we went down to take a look at some of the stuff they had left over because they wanted to know, the maintenance guy called and said, uh, there's a couple boxes we don't know what to do with, do you want them? I said, okay. We walked down there, looked around, and we found literally probably about 100 VHS tapes from uh, the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. So there were these old tapes from graduations, from events that we had on the campus, from sporting events, things like that that nobody knew existed. So immediately we had um, some of these transferred from a company, turned them onto a flash drive, which oddly enough fit on this little flash drive. So we put about probably 100 or some in there, and then the rest we kind of, since they weren't labeled, uh, we put them in the VCR and I recorded them digitally onto the computer. And we were able to use a lot of that footage for our 50th anniversary videos and celebrations so people got an idea of um, what the campus was like back then. So some of the publications, things that we create. Here's our college view book. Um, some of our brochures like business, health sciences, computer information systems. Um, hospitality program. We have logos and, and fact sheets. We have postcards. Handbooks. More postcards. Catalogs, many different things, flyers, posters, whatever is needed that our admissions department or 